In this video tutorial, we're going to highlight while in the embroidery side of the Singer SD9180, how to say move through a design stitch by stitch or color by color. What happens if you break a thread or you run out of bobbin or it just gets all jammed up for any accidental reason, you need to kind of come back and kind of start over after you've kind of cleared out any uh, misbehaving threads. So this is one of the questions we do get asked the most, but here is what I want to just kind of encourage you. Let's say you're stitching along and things might not, you're still learning and that's okay. The learning process um, can take a little uh, few times practices. Don't get discouraged, but we do have a video on just troubleshooting things to be aware of. Uh, we do have a class called em Machine Embroidery 101 that talks about everything you should know before you start embroidering. And, and those can be a lot of the hiccups that you can totally totally avoid by taking that course, by the way, and just have a good foundation. So let's say you're stitching along, something happens. Let's just say you run out of bobbin and you need to kind of go back. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pull up a de the de this same design. I don't have any thread in the machine, but I'm going to show you how you can go stitch by stitch. And this is a two color design. So I'm going to show you how I could maybe skip to just the second color and actually Maybe just sew the second color. Maybe we are skipping one whole color section all together. We only are sewing or embroidering color number two. And by the way, I do that actually quite a bit where I'll look at a design and I'm like, you know what? I just want to stitch the outline. Well, outlines are normally one of the last colors that are stitched. So you might be skipping colors one through three and getting right to color four, the outline, the last color, and then you're using it as just a quick little uh, stitched out area. Sometimes I use outlines for machine quilting, you know, where you might be actually hooping up the whole quilt, your fabric, your batting, your back, and you don't actually need stabilizer. You can actually do that and quilt a perfect outline design into a block or square. And then before you know it, you've hooped and hooped and all of a sudden your quilt is quilted with your embroidery machine. Even with this small hoop, you'd be surprised of how awesome it could be. Now, I wouldn't start on a king size quilt. Maybe do something like a table runner that maybe you finished and you just go, gosh, you know what? It kind of needs a little bit more quilting, but you quick threw it on the table. We used it, we washed it. Now it still needs a little quilt. You could use that exact project for this exact test. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to zoom you in. We're going to pull up the design. I'm going to show you how you move around stitch by stitch, how you back up stitch by stitch, and how you can skip forward color by color. Now, if you haven't already, make sure that you have clicked the like button on this video. That's your way of saying thank you for this information and get in the habit of every video that you watch from our channel, from other people's channel. If you're watching their content, click like. I've got to get you guys going and clicking like. It means so much for the YouTube creators that have given you this information. Okay, so this design was actually the third design in and I'm going to go ahead and go to the edit screen. I have the hoop on, I'm not moving it. I'm just going to go ahead and touch the check mark. The little movement of the hoop is it just checking to see that everything is properly attached. Okay, so I can see right here that I have two colors as part of this design. And at the top, you we can kind of keep an eye on this number too. It starts uh, zero or it will go all the way up to a stitch count of 4,600 stitches. Okay, so right down here where there's a little needle and a picture of a plus minus, you can go into here at any time and you can even kind of uh, faux embroider. <laughs> like you want to see like how it's going to start to stitch out, meaning you just want the foot to kind of move around and see where it's going to begin. You could do that just by holding your finger or stylus on the needle plus option. So what's happening is the little plus is starting to show us some color here on the screen. I can also, the longer you hold it on, the faster it goes, by the way. So up top here, I see that I'm already into this design 50 plus stitches, and then it jumps over there, and then it jumps over there. And what I'm also seeing is exactly, it's going right where and over the top of where that design stitched out originally. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Let's say we got the message that we are out of bobbin and we really, we've re put a new bobbin in, we've re-threaded, and now we need to back up. Here's my little tip for backing up when I have to kind of 
start over. Well, I don't have to start over, over, but just to overlap a little bit of what we've done so far. Now, you don't have to go to the exact stitch where the last one ended. I don't recommend that at all. What you wanna do is come back, say, even a quarter inch past where it ended. That would make sure that you wouldn't have a gap for where you kind of overlapped and started again. Now, you and I might be able to see immediately where you've overlapped some stitches that were already there, but I will tell you, by the time you get the whole design stitched out, you probably couldn't tell me where that extra thickness was. So don't be afraid of actually just um, backing up, stitching over something. It's better to have too much stitched over than a gap of because one stitch didn't connect just perfectly. But we can just go ahead and we minus back. We're going back over itself, kind of uh, the satin stitch, and then you could start it again. The other thing we talked about is actually being able to jump to the next color or skip the first color altogether. And that's what these little um, cones of thread look like. So these each stand for each color change. So in this particular design, it shows me up here where the color palette is, one of two. And then if I go ahead and touch the plus, it shows that I'm on color two of two. So then if I go ahead and start with the plus, it's starting with the, the pink that's really bright right now is the part that is was color one. And now it's actually doing kind of a, the grayish part over the top of it. So can you see how that's kind of really starting to show up on screen and I can see where my needle is and so forth. So if I just want to go to color two and not stitch color one, this is what I'm gonna use here. Now, if you find a design that holding your, your stylus on is taking way, way too long and you realize, oh my gosh, I got another thousand stitches to go possibly, you have an option with the needle with an N on it. I'm gonna pretend that N stands for numbers, which means that I could actually go, I was at 20, what, 27,000, or not 27, 2,700 stitches. So if I need to just jump to say, 3700 or 3770, um, it will just jump me right to that stitch and it might be closer to where I need to kind of start. Maybe I can back up a few or go forward a few, but it can kind of jump you quicker through a design and get you stay closer to the end if that's kind of where you need to start over. Um, you can also go back, you know, sometimes I'll just even go back and restart a color at the beginning, the first stitch, and just kind of like, got to get a restart. And so instead of trying to back up, I'll actually stitch the whole color. Maybe that is overlapping some that already stitched successfully, but then it will just kind of continue past maybe where I had a little oops or I had to stop and then trim threads and, and get things back on track. So never be afraid to go back forward. You can always get to the stitch that you are hoping to start on. So that's hopefully what I'm giving you the, the, in, the, the confidence of with this screen is you can find exactly the stitch that you need to be on with a little patience kind of watch your screen watch where you are over here and then you can see oh yeah it, it did stitch that part okay now oh that's the area that i need to kind of uh, find myself to start again at and again just back up a few extra stitches than you think and re-thread, put a new bobbin in, whatever you're needing to do. Put a, change your needle if it's been a while and you're really feeling like that could be part of your problem. And then start again. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time you will be successful by just taking the time and picking up where you left off and work your way through it. Just have some patience and don't give up. And once again, go through all of our video tutorials. We'll put a link here at the end where our whole playlist is. And again, we've been talking about encouraging you to take some of our online courses like the Embroidery Essentials online course where you'll learn a lot of techniques and become more familiar with your machine, helping you move through it much easier so it's not so foreign every time you sit down to sew or embroider. So I hope this practice has been helpful. And again, make sure you click like at the end of this video. Check out all of our links below to our courses, our free videos that you can watch, and all the rest of the free video tutorials on the Singer SE 9180.